Well, I uh, moved to Thailand recently um, in the state of a career change, which uh, today has me talking here. Uh, but I've been in and out in Thailand for about a decade, and it's a nice place to live. What's like the main selling point of the town itself? Well, Pattaya is a beach resort, but the beach is pretty crummy. Um, other than that, it's got a lot of recreational sports and uh, street sex. And is 100% guaranteed. Easy Visa, North Patio Road, near the Dolphin Roundabout. The thing I hated about England was that my life was planned. They offer you debt and loan and mortgage and everything that you need in normal life back in England ties you to staying there. My wife's 20 years younger than me, much more personable, not as demanding, much more attentive, but at the same time, seem to have a stronger grip on your bollocks. When I set off to come out here, I swore I'd never pay for sex, but I was just naive in thinking that I wasn't already. You're still paying for sex. Marriage is legalised prostitution. What is a prostitute? I mean, a woman at home waiting for her husband to get the paycheck is no different. In August 2004, Thailand became my home for nine months. I'd just graduated. My girlfriend Sam, her parents lived out there, so we flew out to do a bit of travelling and relax a bit. Bangkok, the capital, is a crazy place to live. High-rise buildings fill the skyline, traffic jams take up any space left below. I mean, they are literally never ending. So people sort of climb out of their cars on the hard shoulder and walk home. But the city does have a fantastic energy. I mean, there is so much going on. The old and the new existing side by side. And then there's the Sky Train, a godsend, carving a little piece out from the mayhem below. It offers Bangkok citizens a glimpse of the future as it carries them there. We got this idea when we were out there to make a film about sex tourism. We fancied the idea of being roving journalists undercover, so we bought dodgy press cards on the Khao San Road. We looked up the stats how the sex industry there contributed to 14% of the country's GDP. How there were 2.8 million women working in sex bars and brothels across the country. How 200,000 children a year were being abused by paedophiles. We had our whole little expose planned out. But what we found meant the stats just didn't add up. Things just weren't as we'd expected. People say, oh, no, I'm not paying for it. So rubbish. Back in England, you take a girl out, you're going to pay four times as much, and then she'll turn you down at the end of the night. Here, you, you, you spend next to nothing. The girl treats you like she's your girlfriend. And she's gone in the morning. Cool. Marriage is legalised prostitution. Do you, do you think it's true or false? True. False. I don't know enough about it. Legalised prostitution? No. False. True. No. Marriage is the most beautiful thing I think uh, ever been. Within a Western context, that the exchange of relatively small amounts of money for sexual services is, for many of us, the nexus of that issue. because they're lazy, because they don't want to work, you know, they don't want to work long hours in a field, in the sun, grafting for like 2,000 baht a month when they can get that in a night. You can't separate the, the need for money out of the character of the people in Thailand. It's just in there. Money is just swine into them all. Well, I wish I could say that I'd never heard that comment before. I have a very big problem with 
men who think that they're actually coming here and doing some development work by actually going to brothels and paying women off. If you're coming in with that sort of attitude, you've got it all upside down. If you don't affect their life, they don't even think about you. That's how they see the world. In some places, there are women who will happily accept gifts, but would be appalled by someone putting money on their table. Now, some people believe that any kind of um, sex work is slavery. The other side makes the argument that there will be sex work. It may not be ideal, it may not think it desirable, but it will be there. And therefore what you attempt to do is give people, as workers, the maximum protection. Often the people who are least consulted in this are the women themselves. Do you enjoy your job, would you say? I don't think so. Have, have you ever enjoyed your job? I don't think so. Have you ever enjoyed sex? Everybody enjoys about money, not enjoys sex. <laughs> yeah, much money, good. They see prostitution only as what takes place in brothels. And so you will have girls who will say, I have a choice. Receiving money becomes less important than the issue of agency and choice. When I get to a ripe old age, if I don't look too fetching, I can come here and get treated like a god. You can pick whichever you want, and just flash out your money, and, and you are, all of a sudden, you're a superstar. You're a movie star. Hi, I'm TV presenter Jeremy Gardner. Do modern Western women seem too interested in their careers to notice a decent, sensitive guy like yourself? Well, you're not alone. TieBridesForYou.com is the company with the experience and the network to find you your perfect future partner. Our selection of beautiful Thai women, all of whom understand perfect English, are just longing to meet a man like you and fall in love. Imagine the perfect lifelong companion, willing to fulfill your every desire in the bedroom and not ashamed to be a happy homemaker. response to that am <laughs> I on camera right now <laughs> well, <laughs> is that well. <laughs> the scum of the earth from every country in the entire world the ugliest the most disgusting the most low-class men from all over the world end up in this country the realities of trafficking are not girls being sold by their parents. That concept is alive. I mean, you, you, you read about that sort of thing, it's where families are selling their children, that's true. The fact is that most girls leave their villages voluntarily. They all have this damn problem where they get married after school. They get knocked up by some Thai guy who just leaves them sat on their ass. So what does the girl do? She can't do anything. She can only go out on the street and try and earn some money. She wants to support her child. They often sacrifice for their families. How do you cope with walking down the street and you see all these men coming towards you? They're usually balding, fat, podgy, over 50. And on their arm is a young Thai lady and you say to yourself, how can I live in a society where this is greeting me every day, day in, day out? For centuries, European culture has seen Oriental culture as a place where luxury and decadence are easily at hand. So people would leave the cold wastes of Northern Europe to be fed luxurious foods and be waited on by beautiful women. The way Thailand advertises itself, and indeed the way Western, Western travel firms, airlines, hotels advertise Thailand, is very interesting. If you walk through Thai, Thailand's airports at the moment, there's a slogan up on all the posters, which is a, a big smiling face that says, all smile, all the time. And this image of the smiling, docile, subservient woman who is there to please your every need has been pushed to this by literature and now by advertising for centuries. And to me that says this is a society where, you can, where no one will complain, you do what you like, everyone will smile because this is just about pleasure. I've now lived in Thailand for five years and I've actually 
watched girls who started off as flower sellers move on up to become cigarette lighter sellers and then now are working in the bars. And when you see a five-year-old mimicking some of her yeah. older peers and learning how to flirt with foreign men, it's really heartbreaking. situation would be she would sit uh, in the mirror room and the, she has the number and the customer will pick the number and she said someday she got 20 customer was it with Thai men every country foreigner Thai you know it's kind of like saying for the sex worker that like you eat like a pig, you live like a dog, but you dress up like an angel. didn't treat them so well. They were just commodities to do as they were told. Expendable. Expendable. Her group like eight or nine people. Only her left alive. The rest of them pass away from AIDS. If a girl was found to be HIV positive, she ended up, well, disappeared. Patty, oh, well, what, a, what a cesspool that was. Especially when the Yanks were there. You'd see guys running around half naked, and, or naked sometimes in the street, drunk as law, the girls hanging on. It was just a disgusting, bloody display of open sex and, and booze. But they cleaned that all up now, that's all stopped. A few years ago, some mates of mine came back from Thailand with wild stories of drink and debauchery, of overpriced bars filled with women performing unimaginable acts on stage. Now Don seemed to think that Bangkok had cleaned up his act. To find out if he was right, I was going to have to find a sex bar to film inside. But to do that, I'd first have to find a way around the strict no-camera policy operated by most of Bangkok's go-go bars. This is Sam's sexy new bag we bought her. It's a custom-made bag which actually is a hidden camera unit. This strap was actually a belt. Sam lovingly sewed it down the side of the bag. If you look carefully, you can see that this is a uh, lens in there, can you see that? Yeah, it's just trying to get in focus. There we go. There we go. Where do you think is the area in Bangkok most famous for red light district? Pat Pong. Pat Pong. Pat Pong. Pat Pong. Overrated and overpriced. Shows? I've been to one in a pub bomb, that's it. Not been to one in Patty. What did they do? The, the, the upstairs one, was it? Yeah, it's not a turn on, it's just a, gee, wow, look at this. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a banana show. Yeah, the banana <laughs> the show and the bottle top. Yeah, and the bottle top? Yeah, the bottle top, yeah, yeah, they do all that, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting stuff. I did all the usual things. I saw the ping pong shows. One where they're even firing water out that pushes into the audience. <laughs> I've seen some hilarious shows. They have the live, the live sex shows. Have you seen those ones? See, I thought uh, one of the ladies we spoke to said that that doesn't happen. Some bars do, yeah. I know in Patti are they still doing it. Time in, they have a naughty with the lady on stage. I know what you're thinking, that's all very well, but would she fit in coming to my country? 
Well, yes. Not only that, but you'll be the envy of all your friends. How many of them can boast a great-looking wife 20 years their junior? Still not sure? Well, consider this. Research shows that the average cost of dating a Western woman is well over $3,000 per year. Your tie bride will cost you a fraction of that, and you'll be helping a struggling Asian economy. There's such a status thing in Thailand, it's, especially in Bangkok, like money is so important to everybody who lives here. It's so ingrained into the cultural fabric that you automatically feel like as a foreigner, and as somebody who's got more money than the Thai people, that you sort of demand a little more respect and that you demand a little bit of status because you're comparatively wealthy. A friend of mine and I like to call it an unjustified sense of entitlement. A lot of the people who live here come from pretty middle class environments back at home in their own home countries and here are treated like kings. I suppose they become really good at being psychologists because they suss out the psychology of the victim. We talk about you know, vampires and fucking werewolves, man. I mean, they are that combination. But they're just in there and they're going to suck the drive to get the job. Don't think for one minute the sweet and nice person in the name and other is capable of doing you a nasty thing. So I'm always on my guard with all of them. If I'm really weak, you know, you've got to take your friend, but earlier you were saying that it's like built into them to be. Not sure, conniving, right. what was the word you used? The object of treacherous. 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 They are treacherous, and there are degrees of everything. But the underlying motivation, which is the, the inherent that is the emotion, is treachery. They will be treacherous. Now, I'll tell you something. I've had one been going for three years, and this is this time. I, this, it's blown me away. I just can't believe that it's happened. This lady I've trusted. I see her up in an apartment and everything. I used to send her money. All of a sudden, she says to me, Oh, I've got to go have something to eat. I want to go to the supermarket uh, to uh, Robinson's. I said, Fine, let's go. She rushed up around. She said, Well, I've got to go to the toilet. I said, Okay, well, I'll go to the toilet. The toilet's both so I go to the toilet. She goes to the toilet. I come out two minutes, wait five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. No show. So then I start look at my wallet, my ATM card's gone. Surely she, she wouldn't take that. So I rang the bank and, and cancelled it. I went in Monday morning to get a new card. Very cunning. Must have been all calculated. Yeah, um, looking after her. I mean, I've been sending her money and she's been really good, you know, friendly. This is a woman that I'd known three years. 200,000 baht. Yeah, there's a pretty high breakup. I think about 60 to 65 percent. There's in the too first many six pretty months. girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think mean, Thai girls. Yes. yes. The Thai women think that they're going to get a passport and money out of their country. Mm. Have you not been out to the airport? Oh, the Western yeah. man going yeah. off, and, and the there's the tears, tears, and the girls hugging oh, on to yeah. him, and two hours later, there's another frame comes off and. Darling, you know. And these girls don't mind standing in line if, if the man is married. They don't mind standing in line being the second, so-called second wife. They're still happy to come in and have a relationship with your husband. These men lose all common sense. They're right in the middle of a midlife crisis. They come here, they're treated as demigods, and the girls throw themselves. Yeah. They just and can't they... help feel like they're they're in Hollywood. So what you're saying is that although they seem to be more in control, the relationship actually the Thai woman is manipulating. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Of course, absolutely. Yes. No. I want to enjoy my life. <laughs> I don't want to get married. I want money and good take care. Good mm -hmm. take care, good money. Everything Western can give for Thai people, you know, can give for Thai lady. She's just start the same, you know, age, like 14, like become a sex worker the mm -hmm. first time. That time the customer pay her 10,000 baht. Was that because she was a virgin late? Yes, yes. Less than a year, her 
price <laughs> fell to 60 baht per person. In 60 baht, she will get 20 baht for herself. The rest of that will give to the owner of the brothel, to the pol uh, police. Yeah. She decided to go to work because the family economics is difficult. Her friend asked her to go. Even though sometimes when the women has period, yeah. yeah, they force them to work. So yeah. they use the sponge, you know, put in the you know, vagina and don't let the blood come out, something like that. So that's the way, you know, sex workers do it. What exactly is trafficking defined as? Um, um, oh. um, Do you, mean tra you mean the definition of trafficking? There's um, a number of definitions of trafficking. We have the um, def international definition. The definition of trafficking implies that there is no... Or is Any situation where they become vulnerable and where they are at risk for being harmed. Any child that migrates, I mean, there's a huge amount of migration in the region. It's almost a class issue. Those who are highly skilled and highly educated have a right to migrate, while those who are less educated and of a lower economic status somehow aren't given the right to migrate. You're here making a film in Thailand. You didn't choose to make the film back in Britain. Some people want to be, want to come to Thailand, they Some want to people, be they, no, you can never con consent to be a slave. Trafficking is movement plus exploitation. Really, it's just slave labor. The problem is, is this. By labeling it something new, trafficking has the connotation of sex, because the people yeah. who talk about trafficking talk about trafficking to sex work. Yeah. But it's still forced labor. It's complex, but people have also made it more complicated. Right. We've been told that the girls in Bangkok's red light district arrive in Bangkok from all over Thailand for just one reason, to earn more money. Figures we've been shown suggested that the average monthly income for a family in Bangkok was $695 per month, compared with just under $230 per month for those in the north. But I was still confused about how many of the girls working in Bangkok's sex trade had been trafficked as opposed to travelling voluntarily. <laughs> Sam and I drove up to Maesai in northern Thailand to see what was being done to prevent girls ending up in prostitution. We met Nobel Peace candidate Sompop Yan Tracker to find out how local village people view the situation. We are thinking of the people, they say, ah, don't worry, we will not sell our daughters. Yeah. But uh, they must have something to do. If my daughter don't have anything, don't go to school, don't work, I cannot keep my daughter just for free because sometimes the boys will come and take her and yeah. she herself will go with the boys and I will lose my daughter without anything. If she sells sex, at least the family but, gets some yeah, money. Get some money. It. Sompop told us his centre focused on target areas in northern Thailand, where he'd found girls were most likely to end up being trafficked. By providing a free education for children without legal status, Sompop hopes to offer children an alternative to exploitative labour. These kids have never seen uh, foreigners before. <laughs> Sompop also told me that trafficking evolves, adapting to take advantage of new possibilities that can leave an individual vulnerable.
Every paper I picked up after the tsunami raised concerns about the possibility of children being kidnapped. I tried to find out if anyone had any confirmed cases, but I didn't really get anywhere. Things were too chaotic, I was told. There were lots of reports of trafficking, but no specific examples. I started to wonder if not being able to find solid statistics could be harmful to charities working in trafficking prevention. One of the things with newspapers is that there is generally a great deal of pressure on their journalists to come up with a number. They don't sort of stop to think, okay, let's say the 800,000 figure that the US government uses worldwide is correct. But the second problem that you have with a lot of these statistics is that they are often exaggerated either because people quite sincerely feel that they want to impress the public with what a terrible problem this is, or also in the hunt for funding. I suspect that there is an enormous pressure, particularly um, from the, the marketing, the fundraising side in, in UN agencies and, and NGOs, on, on the, the practitioners, the people who are dealing with the problem, to come up with, with grand statistics. There's a big temptation if you have no statistics to come up with whatever you like. What those kinds of statistics produce is false precision is people feel that they know something that they don't. And the famous bad statistic, endorsed by, the, by, by various agencies and quoted again and again, which is that 2.8 million Thai women at that time were prostitutes. Which would mean one in four females aged 15 to 30 would be involved in it, and that would have to include my daughter as well. And that's not possible, it's at maximum would be 200,000. If you question that number, People would say to you, don't you think it's a serious problem? You will hear repeated that most trafficking is sex trafficking. There's absolutely no data of any quality to support that. In Thailand, the majority of children who are trafficked from Cambodia are not trafficked for sex. They're trafficked for begging. You don't hear about it because it's not as sexy as sex trafficking. Shall I take off my official hat or put on my official hat? Whichever you like, we're on the record. Let's have two. <laughs> I find it really worrying, the, uh, the lack of methodology to the approach to this problem. No area of development work that I can see works on such a ragged statistical basis. Maybe we need to be much clearer in terms of our methodology of how we sample, mm. how we uh, generalize yeah. from the samples. Well, I think that would be great, but, but I also think there's this problem of abuse of statistics. That famous ECPAT 2.8 million prostitutes in Thailand, which everyone now knows is, is a grossly exaggerated figure, is still quoted again and again worldwide. We need to be balanced in terms of our, our stats, and if, if it's not certain, I'm quite willing to say it's not certain. relationship with these girls you get on just friends oh uh, yeah friend stroke father first of all they are young how young young my job is like hurting children at times in almost every country around the world it's actually local perpetration of child sex that is driving the demand Thailand kind of has this image of being a child sex haven that it's carried over since right. the 80s. Um, I wouldn't say that's really the case anymore. Thailand has been very strong and has had a number of successful prosecutions on the issue of underage sex. People come commit offenses in Thailand and then go home. Now it used to be if they went back to the United States or to Britain or to Australia, nothing could be done about them. A number of countries now have what is called extraterritorial laws. So they can be prosecuted in their home country for offenses committed, say, in Thailand. I think there's another common misconception that I'll call it in the West. Thai men have a sort of predilection for very young girls. Under the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which has been signed by virtually every country in the world, the cutoff age for children is 18. If we are talking about the common sense definition of children, in other words, girls who are not sexually mature, there is no consensus in Thai society that it is legitimate for an adult male 
to have sex with a prepubescent girl. That is not acceptable. <laughs> How old is she? She's six years old. She's six? Yeah, when she came here she was very malnourished. She had a big pot belly. But now she's very happy. And covered in talcum powder. And covered in talcum powder because then they go home smelling nice to their parents. Yeah. <laughs> How cute is that? Maysai was such a beautiful area. It was difficult to think of it as a place where trafficking thrived. I got caught up in how cheery the town was, how friendly everyone seemed. I sort of forgot how much went on behind closed doors. Until one evening in November, when we had a run-in with the local mafia. We're uh, running away from Maysai. We just met a guy who showed us the brothels. He was explaining how the place is so riddled by corruption and gang warfare that it's probably best not for us to hang around. The police have us on file. So we've uh, decided to leave. He said, do you not want to do an interview because you think you'll get shot? So he, She he was said scared. That someone... She didn't want to be a part of it. She looked scared. Police but... car, police car, police car. Really? Yeah. Oh, and it's flashing us. Shit. It's gone past, it's gone past, it's gone past. He wanted us to just move out of the way. I've got to get out of Maysai. Do you think maybe it's more westernised or like maybe a problem that didn't happen 50 years ago? Girlfriends you're right. and boyfriends? Yeah, you're right. So uh, the, I think the country changed, the way of living of the people changed. Coca-Cola everywhere, and Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> and ice cream and everything, and so the road and radio and television, mobile phone. They are poor. Yeah. They are huge tribe, but they're living in a consumer culture. Yeah. Tourists everywhere. Sompop had a point. Tourists were all over the place. Bangkok in particular has been heavily influenced by Western culture. And there are plenty of Western men who come to Thailand with no interest whatsoever in paying Thai bar girls for sex. When they think that they can get it for free. I have got absolutely no pussy. We are now going to Silk Bar, which is of your basic Thai pussy. Filthy pussy. Thai, filthy, dirty pussy. There. They don't give a fuck, no shagalapos. No. These backpackers claim that it wasn't money the girls they met were after, just casual sex. In 10 minutes time, this place will fill up with absolute Thai beauties out here for the Western Cup. I got a snog. I did get a snog. She wasn't very good looking and no. She wasn't up for sex. Let's go to another bar. This is my friend Jenna in the green. He is now trying to solicit sex. His chances are maybe 73 in his favor. If he wants it bad enough, he will get it. I don't know who you are, but you're standing in there. If we could just send photos of the boys in the bars back to their mums in Canada, in the US, in the UK, how would they feel? It would be unacceptable. If there was a parallel universe, a little Southeast Asian country with beautiful sunshine, young, beautiful men dating older women, do you think that could happen? <laughs> I think it's oh, a, a, a strong possibility. I mean, if we're absolutely honest So are you saying ourselves. we've got a streak of jealousy in ourselves? <laughs> 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 I'm just, I'm just, well, is there? Is there? Probably. Yeah. If the truth be known and people were brave enough to say so, yes, if there was a young, a nice <laughs> island and young man. A week before my flight home, the boys take me out on the town in a last ditch effort to demonstrate what I've been missing out on. Perfect way to start a day. No, no, it's not actually a very good English breakfast. No. <laughs> Perfect idea. Well, if you're going to go, you're going to go happy, right? 
I'm gonna go full. Hey fellas, let me ask you this. Have you ever recognized a room from the penthouse from the background of an internet porn photo? Like you see a naked girl and you're like, wait a minute, I know that room. That's the <laughs> penthouse. This guy Have you? Yes. Really? Recently, the stucco wall, the spirit house mirror, the uh, cheesy lighting. I've been like, that's in the fucking penthouse. How many times do you reckon you've stayed it? This will be my third. <laughs> because I'm a hunk and they all drool over me. There's so many fat, fucking ugly Germans and stuff, they're gonna, they're gonna want something like me. I mean, just because it's so open, people think it's so mercenary, and it's just fucking open. A friend had lined a girl up for Jason at Spanky's bar. Apparently, she looked like Beyonce. Well, the girl he was hooking me up with wasn't the girl he was talking about. I said, well, I want the girl you were fucking talking about, you muppet. So he tried to arrange that, but neither of them want me. The girls at Spanky's were more choosy than expected. So he pushed on to new bars and new women while I hung back and taught philosophy with Steve. Love exists if both people want it to exist. That's what that boils down to. It's a human notion. Right. Most emotions are human inventions. And when you apply them to things that aren't human, they seem irrelevant. Oh, I'm in love with this guy and he's in love with me. Why can't I be enough for him? He still wants to fuck number two. You gotta understand. Is that, so, is that the reason so many people emigrate to Thailand? No, it's just easier to get away with whatever you want to do. They don't point a lot of fingers here. It's all up to you. What about women that continue to sleep with women that they know are bad for them, that they don't like, that have been abusive to them, that have been mean to them? Somewhere, somehow, there's some little biological something that's getting fixed. <laughs> Jason finally found a prostitute who wasn't quite so choosy. The guys were unanimous in their decision that I couldn't appreciate the bar girl client understanding if I refused to sleep with any women. I spoke to Sam about this and she wasn't very comfortable with the idea. So as a compromise, I tried taking a girl from Nana Plaza on a weekend away without having sex or spending money on anything that came without a receipt. You have one, two, six, eight, seven. Who is the men for me? <laughs> I've been waiting for about two hours and thought I'd been stood up when B suddenly phoned out of the blue and told me that she was bringing along a friend for my cameraman. The girls had never left Bangkok, so we decided a road trip to Chiang Mai would make a nice change of scenery. But I'm old. Yeah, Stuart was young. He said he had girlfriend, you know. This, this is he true. He broke my heart. <laughs> I fell in love with him, but uh, he a uh, bad man, huh? Me? Yes. Why? Because him thinking about girlfriend every That's minute. That's not bad. If you come in the bar, you're not thinking about your girlfriend. You have to forget. Have lady take care of you in the bar. I think B was testing the water. She seemed to find the whole no sex clause very amusing, although I don't think she really believed it. But when I asked B about her family back home, I really felt I was beginning to understand why she became a prostitute in the first place. Do you send money to your family? Yeah, yes, yes. In Thai, we have to send money for family. I not tell my family uh, I'm working with Falang, you know? I say I'm working on a laundry or clean something. <laughs> Your family wouldn't like you to be working bum bum? No! 
They would be they would very be bad. Angry. very bad. Yeah, my boyfriend very rich. Very rich. Kevin from Wales. Yeah. He call me every day. One hour he talk 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 talk. talk. Every day. I don't want to talk with you every day. It's boring. <laughs> I miss you. I miss Four you. Four oh shit. You have many many gig, you know. You have many gig. Gig is like other boyfriend, yeah. No. Gig only sleep or feed it. At dawn, we reached Thailand's old capital, Ayutthaya, which I'd really been wanting to see. But the girls weren't interested. They asked if we could drive on to Chiang Mai and get pissed. Uh, relationship problem. B had gone off in the direction of the other bars looking for a more serious punter and managed to get lost. She was angry with me about something and things had somehow stopped feeling like a game. B had called on my mobile in a rage, screaming down the phone. I rushed off into the streets and found her huddled up outside a hotel, 50 metres from my own. She wouldn't let me near her, she was crying and screaming. I knew it was a bad idea. I did regret it immediately but the promise that B could sleep in my bed seemed to be the only thing that would console her. If you don't take her, she'll only become a backstreet prostitute, open up to violence and abuse all her short adult life. Talking about violence towards women, Thai Brides for You condemn any such act, even though Thai women never complain or go to the police. So how do you choose your lifelong Asian beauty? It's easy. Simply log on to our website today and browse through our extensive selection. There are plenty of women to choose from, and when you find one that takes your fancy, it takes just one click and we'll do the rest. One time when she saw the helicopter flying above and she wanted to go to look, the neighbor yelling to the mama sang, oh, your, your girls run away. The mama sang came and then, you know, hit her and Alina tie her with the rope, put the red ends on her body. Sometimes the girl will come and ask for money and say that uh, I will go back home. After they got money, they just run away. It turned out that those <coughs> girls were killed. If they try to escape, they, yes. would, they would be killed. Yes, yes. You will get some sexual disease. The mama sang will give the medicine to them by herself. She wouldn't let them go to hospital or? No, Mama Sang take care. But she wasn't medically trained? No, the same syringe they use. You use the same syringe for all the girls? Yeah, for all the girls. We met UNICEF worker Rob at a UN convention on trafficking. Rob had this idea of taking a two hour road trip to Lotbury, a town just north of Bangkok to look at how one small region had responded to the HIV crisis. What did he say? He said, just keep going straight. Isn't that pretty much what everybody's told us? Yes, but yeah. they might just want us to fuck off.
24, got HIV from prostitution, was a singer in a restaurant and a prostitute. So, ha- wow. This one is a man and a woman. Oh, so this one's a katoi. Bani Da Kum Lat. She died at the age of one year, three months, and 21 days, and she got HIV from her mother. We'd arranged to interview some of the centre's living inhabitants, but this had proved more difficult than we'd first imagined. He says you can talk to them, but you can't video them because you need to ask permission from the uh, manager, and the manager's not here, which leaves this idiot in charge. He's delighted by the fact that he's in charge, so he can say, I'm not going to give you permission. Uh Uh Look, if you want people who've got AIDS, I can arrange that for you. I got the impression that in his line of work, Rob got these sort of requests frequently. So on balance, we decided maybe we didn't need to speak to anyone with AIDS. About 35 years ago, we had seven children per family with a very strong and large and rapid population growth of 3.3%. So we introduced the program to provide education and contraceptives throughout the country in every village. And as a result, we have come down from seven children per family to 1.5 children per family and a population growth of about 0.8%. It was something we needed to do to make sure our development endeavors would succeed. As the HIV virus passed undetected from sex workers to clients to their wives and children, Mr. Michai became involved in AIDS prevention when he realised that people were literally dying of embarrassment. For some reason, Thai men just seemed unwilling to wear condoms. Our first philosophy from day one was that if family planning was to work, then contraceptives have to be as available as vegetables in the villages, so cabbages for the vegetables, come down to the contraceptives and this philosophy has stuck and we've used it for names of products and restaurants. It's a very hard name to forget. As a result of gifts from America of American-sized condoms and, and people were complaining to me that they were falling off or they were disappearing. Obviously something was wrong and it was too big and we needed to get something smaller. I guess Tailoring was important, so we went to a massage parlor and asked them to help to talk to customers, and they were trained by the School of Public Health, and they were able to measure the size and the length of the Thai penis. It's the only country that's done it, so that we could make the condom to fit. As it turned out, the average size uh, penis in, in Thailand, absolute, was 5.4 inches, and the circumference was 49 millimeters. So then everyone was given the right size and everyone was happy as a result. Over the last 15 years, we've seen a 90% decline in new HIV positive. So the government used our system to spread public education throughout the country. They are lucky. They are alive. Their hope is with the children try to study as much as you know, they can. They don't want any student to be like that. As a Thai, are you satisfied with the way the Thai government is acting? Give the Thai government credit for being more transparent. The denial factor is gone. I've watched this issue for, what, 10, 20 years? Yeah. Since the very sad events when young girls were were manacled to beds in In a brothel in Phuket and they they were burnt to death. I mean, Mm. that's always been in my mind.
Thailand means land of the free. It's a catchy title for a liberal town, but doesn't really hide the fact that freedom and choice ultimately lie with the consumer. Bangkok was once called the world brothel, but it'd just be unfair to use that expression today. The world's marketplace, maybe. Everything on offer, all things on the cheap. Where modern life is driven through the streets and the towns, but a single life can be bought with a dollar bill. Thailand's changing so fast it's impossible to keep track. Golf courses, shopping malls springing up, the building never really stops. So I wonder, with all this change, if Pat Pong will feature in a Thailand of the future? It depends, I guess, on what we demand. Because I never saw a Thai man in a go-go bar. Just goggle-eyed tourists parting with their pennies. And one day, I suppose Thailand's economy will creep up on our own. And maybe young Thai girls will decide that they don't like sleeping with fat, middle-aged white men after all. But the fat, middle-aged white man might remark that she was too expensive anyway. For those of you who feel that a decision as momentous as choosing your soulmate needs a little more effort, come out and see us. We'll make your stay as enjoyable as possible and you can try as many of the girls as you want. So for the perfect, loyal, love of your life, forget feminism and embrace femininity with Time Rides for You. Log on today.